Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be talking about 10 different Fusion 360 tips that I wish I learned sooner. Let's get started. So I've already made my main part here. So within the part, let's make a new component. First component is gonna be inside. It's just gonna be a two part component here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make a, another component as well uh, under this main component. All right, and so on the inside component, let's start by making a sketch. I'm gonna select the top plane here and then go up to create rectangle center rectangle and i'm going to start here on the origin and just draw a little rectangle there so now i'm going to dimension this side you can do that by clicking create sketch dimension or you can also use the hotkey d which does the same thing and now we're on tip number one which is how to make a quick parameter so i'm going to type in side equals 50. And so what that does is it makes a parameter uh, within the workspace. So now this says 50 millimeters, but then when we come up here and click modify, change parameters, we see that we have a side parameter and equals 50 millimeters. So tip number two is easy equal is what I like to call it. And basically what that is, is now we have this dimension, let's dimension this other side. So I'm gonna click D, which is the hotkey for dimension, click on this side and you'll see that it's 60 millimeters. So if I just simply click on this other dimension, you see that it populates side as the parameter. Now click enter. And now we basically made these two sides equal. We don't have to type in side, we don't have to type in 50. It automatically sets these sides equally just because I clicked on the dimension. So if we come up to modify, change parameter, and let's say we wanna make this side 60 millimeters. Click OK, and now you'll see that they both updated to 60 millimeters. So that's really helpful if you have a bunch of things that are the same dimension and you just wanna click uh, within the workspace to make them the same size. All right, so I'm gonna click Finish Sketch. So now I'm gonna extrude this out. We can do that by clicking the Extrude command or also the hotkey E. As you'll see it was selected here. And I'm gonna extrude it 100 millimeters. All right, so now we have our shape. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fill it the size. So click uh, modify fill it, or you can also click on this, or you can also use the hotkey F, which is what I do most of the time. So I'm gonna select each of the four sides and I'm going to fill it them five millimeters. All right, so now we have our basic shape here and I'm gonna go ahead and make two holes on this face. So I'm gonna make another sketch here on the face. Now I'm gonna click L or create line, which is also the hotkey L. I'm gonna find the midpoint there and then the midpoint there. So this isn't a tip necessarily, but we don't want this to be an actual line that you can extrude off of. We want it to be a construction line. So if you'll select the line after you draw it, and come over here and click construction. The hotkey is X. So if you use the same command and just click X on your keyboard, you'll see that that toggles between a regular line and a construction line. We want a construction line. Now we want to draw two circles. So. You can do that by clicking center diameter circle, or you can click the hotkey C. And I'm going to draw two circles. And I'm going to put them, let's do 30 millimeters apart. I'm going to use the easy equal trick. So come up here and click 30 millimeters, click enter. And now for the diameter, let's make them 10 millimeters. Click D for dimension, and then easy equal. Now we have our two circles, finish sketch, and now I'm going to extrude the circles out. E is the hotkey for extrude. And now we have our two holes. This is all we're gonna do for the inside component. Let's go to the outside component. You'll see that the inside turns transparent. And now we want to select create sketch 
and then select the bottom of our initial component. And this is tip number three, which is the offset commands. So we're gonna go up here and click on offset, and then we're gonna select this border. And this is a really good way to add clearance to your parts. So you'll see here that this is basically just taking the parameter and offsetting it, which is why it's called that. So usually I use a 0.2 millimeter offset and if you'll zoom in really close, you'll see that basically that gives a little clearance for this part. And now we're gonna make another offset, select that same line again, and make this 3.2. So now we have a three millimeter thick wall. And the reason this is useful is that you can imagine if this is a very complicated part, it might be difficult to make a casing like this. So I just recommend using offset. It's really helpful. Like I said, if this is more complicated, uh, offset can really come in handy. So now we have the profile done. Click E for extrude, select the profile, and now just select the top of your previous component and click OK. All right, so now we have our outside component done. And what I wanna do is create holes that line up with those inside holes that we made previously. And the way I'm gonna do that is using tip number four, which is the project command. So we're gonna click create sketch, and we're gonna select that face, then we're gonna click on create again, and select project. It's also the hotkey P. And this also brings us to tip number five, which is the select through command which is basically giving you x-ray vision. So this is kind of tip four and tip five combined. So tip four, which is the project command, as you can see here, if you click on that, it's just gonna project that face. So if we wanted to extrude off of just the face, then we could do that. But I'm gonna go back and click create, project include, project again. And this is kind of tip number five, which is the x-ray vision uh, type thing that I mentioned. So if you click and hold, it gives you this option to select kind of anything that your mouse was in the vicinity of. So we can select that face, which you already did, or we can select the face under it, or we can select the face behind it, or we can select that face uh, behind it again. So it basically lets you pick what you're trying to click on. So even though I can't see those holes, it's allowing me to select the face that's behind uh, this component. So that's tip number five, which is the select through or select within. So now I click OK, and now we see these two holes. So now I can click E for extrude, select the hole, I'm just gonna do one for now, and then extrude out to the back. And you'll see here, if we select both components, that that hole aligns perfectly with our original hole. And the reason that the project command is really useful is if you go back in time to our original sketch, and say let's change the hole size to 20, and then let's make this 35. Okay, so we move that original hole what it does is it updates what you projected as well. So as long as it can reference what you were talking about uh, with the project command, it'll update uh, what you extruded as well. So that's really helpful uh, when you're referencing parts based on other parts. So that brings us to tip number six, which is display the different component colors. So the way you do that is click inspect, display component colors. And what this does is it basically assigns a random color to each of the components. And this is really helpful uh, so that you'll know what component you're working in. So if you look down here, we were in the outside component. So if we click on that, you'll see that it gives you the color that the outside component is displayed as. And then you also see that color up here. And then if we click on the inside component, again, you'll see the same corresponding color. So that's tip number six. It's really helpful just to help with visualization purposes. Now tip number seven is isolate the component. So since we only have two components, this isn't quite as useful as when you have 10 or 20 components, but say I just wanna see the outside component. If you right click on the component, then you can click isolate. So that lets you see just that single component. And that's really helpful. Imagine instead of two components, we have 10 or 20 components. You might wanna just be working on one uh, so that you can kind of focus on that. So that's really easy to isolate. And what that does is just hide all the other components. So if we click on it again, click unisolate, it brings all the other components back. And now another tip for the components is change the component opacity. So if we go up here, right click again, click opacity control, and let's make it say 40%. And then we click on the main component. So what that does, as you can see, is it kind of makes that component translucent. And that's really helpful for if you want to be able to see through a component. So for instance, if we're trying to see 
you know, where this uh, hole is, we can see that now. So sometimes people like to have that uh, transparency turned on just so that you can see things beneath uh, casings and things like that. Now tip number nine is how to ground a component. This took me a little while to learn, but it's really easy. So sometimes you want one of your components to be fixed where it doesn't move around. Right now, both of these components can be moved around however you want to. So I'm gonna undo that and show you how to ground the inside component. So all you do is select the component, right click and click ground. And you'll see that it has a little pin there. So now, since that component is grounded, it doesn't move. So I can click and drag, it stays in place. This other component can move pretty freely. So the way you fix that is with tip number 10, which is as-built joints. And this is really useful. It's pretty unique to Fusion in some ways, since you can make a lot of components in the same kind of file. So the way you do an as-built joint is you click assemble, as-built joint, and then we're going to select the outside component and then select the inside component. And you can change the motion type. So for me, this makes most sense to do a slider motion. And I'm just going to select this center point here. And it gives you a preview of what that joint does. And now I'm going to click OK. And so you'll see here now this will slide up and down. This might be some type of jig where you can adjust the points. So we have those two holes. And now for a bonus tip, I want to show you all how to make these kind of snap back to the original position. So all you have to do is edit the joint. So we're going to come down to the timeline, right click, click edit joint, and then we're going to enable the rest position. So basically what this is going to do, if we click OK, is it's going to keep this at the rest position, which is where we originally made it. So this is helpful if you're just trying to do a demo where you show, OK, this can slide to here, and it kind of goes back to where it originally was. So that's about it for this video. If you want to learn some more about Fusion 360, check out this video right here. Thanks for watching.